You want to lend someone some money and have it secured on the person's property? Lending the money is easy. Typing up the right documents to secure your loan is a little bit more difficult. What to negotiate, what forms to use, what clauses to type on it, all this is important to make sure that you have a valid and enforceable document. This is Juliana too. I didn't think that this would be a topic that would generate a lot of interest, but surprisingly, I got several calls in a short period of time from people asking how to figure out what to do when they are lending money out. So here we are. By the way, please do go on our links below in the video description. There are more articles and information on this topic. But first of all, let us go through the disclaimer. The information contained in this video is only intended to provide a guide in the various California-only transactions to which the information is available. No representation is made as to the legal validity of the information or the adequacy of it in any specific transaction. The information contained should only be used after consultation with legal and financial counsel. Now, why are we covering this topic about the promissory note? Well, once in a while, a buyer of a real property may want to pay the seller for the purchase price in installments through a period of time. There may be several different reasons for this. First of all, the buyer may be unable to qualify for an institutional loan or a regular loan, or the buyer is able to get a better interest rate from the seller, or the seller prefers to get the interest as his income, or the seller prefers to get his proceeds in increments through the years instead of all in one lump sum. This has to do with income tax purposes. Or finally, this is somebody who is lending some money and they want it secured on real property correctly. You will need to know the basics about what kind of an agreement to write up on this loan. So let's briefly talk about the terms and functions. First of all, we've got the promissory note or note as it is commonly shortened to. And this is the legal document and written statement of how the loan is going to be repaid. There are a couple of different types of notes. The note that is secured by recording a deed of trust on a real property, the note that is secured by a security agreement and filing a financing statement on fixtures and equipment of a business, or an unsecured note, which is just an agreement to pay back with no security behind it. It's just a promise to pay based on the integrity of the person and only recoupable if you go to court. Now, the note does not have to be secured on property. But when it is, a deed of trust is used. A deed of trust or trust deed is the document that is used to secure the note on the property. It is the second part of the two document forms for the loans on real property. I talk about the deed of trust in another video, the link of which is below. Another form that we use is the one of the reconveyance. Now the reconveyance is a release. It is used to release the liabilities and responsibilities of the loan once it is paid in full. Now this form comes out at the very end when the loan is paid in full. Here is the terminology in connection with the note. And it is important to know that although both are lending documents, the terminology in the note is different from the terminology in the deed of trust. The payor, is the borrower, is the person who pays. The payee is the lender who is lending the money. The trustee is the neutral third party who will issue the release of the loan once it is paid in full. The trustee has the power of sale, which means that he is obligated to help the payee conduct a foreclosure if the payor does not pay. By the way, please do not confuse trustee with trust deed. One is an entity and one is a form, but they sound alike. 
Now, whichever form you are going to be using, there's going to be a couple of requirements that must be incorporated into it. First of all, it has to be in writing. It has to have an amount on the loan. It has to have a date of the document, and it has to have a payment date. So in writing, an amount, a document date, and a payment date. Also, there must be a person to which is going to be paid to, which is the payee right here. There must be a person who is going to be paying, which is the payor down here. This payor's name usually appears at the bottom of the note uh, where the signature block is. Both the payee and the payor must be legal entities, an entity whose existence is recognized under the state and federal laws. Example, a natural person or an incorporated organization. What is not a legal entity? A DBA or doing business as, or your pet, Fido, your French poodle. Now, the document must be signed by the payor, but it does not have to be signed by the payee unless it is a different type of a note. And it must, it might also surprise you to know that the note does not need to be notarized. So you've got the payee, the payor, both the payee and payor must be legal entities, and the payor's signature does not need to be notarized. So the function of the note is to put in when the interest starts, when the interest, um, uh, when the interest ends, how much the payments are going to be each month, how it is paid each month, and of course, like I said, the final ending date, the term of the note. So we've got the interest, the interest rate starting date, the payment amount, the starting date of the payments, how the payments are going to be made, and the ending date of the note. The other requirements. When the note is backed by real property, I mentioned there are certain conditions under California laws. First of all, you've got to have to have a deed of trust or a trustee. This secures the loan on the payer's property. The note and the deed of trust must have a trustee. And this is the neutral third party who will issue the reconveyance when the loan is paid or under its power of a sale, they will start the foreclosure proceedings. Now, the wording for uh, the proceedings in case the payor does not pay, these wordings are going to be put inside the trustee, and this is what the uh, law states can happen if the loan is not paid. So that wording has to appear on the form. Now, there are certain common clauses negotiated between parties that can be put into the note. For instance, the lay charge or the due on sale clause, meaning that the loan must be paid in full if the property transfers ownership. Or there could be a prepayment penalty if the loan is paid off early or, or paid off uh, more, more than in, paid off in advance. Or there could be a subordination clause that allows the loan to be subordinated to a new loan at a future date. So, for instance, if you have uh, the ability to get a new loan but want to keep this old loan in place, this old loan will have to be subordinated to this new loan. So if you have a subordination clause, it allows you to do this. So, example of common clauses, as I mentioned, late charge, due on sale clause, prepayment penalty, and subordination. Now, what happens after this? Once the note is signed, it is given to the payee or the lender for safekeeping. If there was a deed of trust, that document is also signed, but it has to be notarized. And then it has to be recorded at the county recorder's office where the property is located. 
If this is a note that is secured on a business fixtures and equipment, then the UCC financing statement gets filed at the Secretary of State's office. What happens when the loan is paid off? The note and the trust deed is given to the trustee to issue that reconveyance, and then this reconveyance is also recorded. The payee will also issue a UCC termination statement and file that one at the Secretary of State's office. If the borrower, though, does not pay the loan, then the role of the third party trustee becomes super important. This is where that power of sale rights come into play. With notification from the payee or the lender, the trustee will then have the right to sell the property in a foreclosure so that the payee and the lender can get his money back. When interest rates are low, the need for the seller to carry back a part of his net proceeds in order to give the buyer a loan is very small. But there are always cases when a buyer may not have enough of the down payment and needs help. Sometimes it's family members who will give a loan and they will want to know about this process so that the formal, the loan becomes a formal, uh, uh, it becomes a formal document and their investment is protected. Like a piece of real estate, these two documents, the note and the deed of trust, are an important proof of your asset and it should be treated with all consideration and care. Do not lose these documents because you're going to need to give them to the trustee in order to get the re lien released or to start the foreclosure proceedings. And because they are an asset and there are many variables, requirements, and conditions to consider, it is important that the borrower and the lender consult with their legal and financial counsel whenever they are negotiating a loan because it requires specific knowledge of the sections of law that govern uh, the notes and trustees. It's either the Business and Professions Code or the Civil Code. Then you should have a knowledgeable professional prepare the documents. Errors may invalidate parts of the note or the deed of trust or even the whole note. And this may not be caught until years down the road at a crucial moment. So if you're going through an escrow transaction, the escrow officer can help you. But it is always up to you, or the client, to obtain their own independent legal counsel and to review the note to make sure that it properly reflects the agreements and that it will stand up in a court of law. Now, if you wish to prepare the forms yourself, we have the forms available for access in our link below. My t-shirt for today is a Chinese character, Jing. So you can see, Jing. In one character, it encompasses the state of being quiet to ground yourself and get in touch with your inner, inner being. So I wish you, Jing, and find your inner peace. This is Juliana too. Be sure you check out my video part two on the deed of trust. I hope you have gotten some important information here and I thank you for watching. I shall see you in the next video.